morning, I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. We're in uh, Hamish's group and he's looking very interested in a ewe and she's not running away. Oh now she's going to give him a cold shoulder and pretend like she's more interested in the food. <clears throat> But if she's not in heat now, she's going to be in heat very shortly. Because he's sticking with her and she's not running away. Not that you. That, that one right beside him now. There she is. It's too hot for those ants to work. They probably, do, they probably do it all at night. Lights are out? When it's cooler. Oh, I had a Shetland ram that I, I thought for sure didn't breed anyone, and he bred everybody at night. <laughs> well, he's putting a lot of thought into it. He's, he's just trying to win her over. See, she, he wants to know that yes truly means yes, and it's not going to switch to no. Maybe he's been at it already and he's tired. Uh, Maybe he's overweight. Uh, <laughs> oh. I should have trimmed him up a little bit and kept his testicles a little cooler. Oh, uh, that's what Michael said. Michael said you should have uh, trimmed his testicles. They're going to go for some privacy. <laughs> oh, they are doing it in privacy. Mark the date down. It's possible. Uh, Hi. Uh, probably about 3.30 in the morning. If I do the calculations right. Hi, girls. These girls are getting uh, corn with a little bit of barley mixed in. This one you can see the barley a little bit better. preferred the hay in this feeder. The other day we put two bales out and they finished this one but they're still working on the other one. Hey buddy, are you hungry or are you just relaxing? See, our, our, our cats don't really know how to eat anymore so you've got to pick them up now and you've got to get them up here and they say, oh, they get something to eat. Well, Tom doesn't like sharing his spot. Yeah, these two like each other, watch. Hey, Hi, Tom. Tom. Hi, buddy. Hi, Tommy. These two like each other. That's good, because Tom didn't like anybody. Hey, Tom. Is Buddy at your spot? We never thought we'd see Tom with other another cat. 
they've been living in the same barn for years, but uh, Tom is uh, someone who needs a lot of time to warm up to things, but he's on the platform with Buddy and they're not fighting. So that's good. Looks like they might even share food without fighting. Good pussy cats. Yes, you guys are good pussy cats. Hi, buddy. Hi. Did you teach Tom to be friendly? Hey. Hi, Tom. Hi, boys. Sorry I haven't posted much lately, but uh, we've been trying to get caught up on all our uh, household repairs and stuff, and I really didn't think that uh, you guys would like to see us fixing door handles on doors and uh, replacing lights, light fixtures and stuff like that. So we've been trying to catch up as much as we can. Right now we're coming into the Dorset group because we're going to concentrate on our breeding groups now. And uh, we're going to be pulling Gimli out of his harem. Hey, Gimmy. Gim Gimli's going to be removed. And Gaston is going to be removed from his group. We're going to leave Fargo in there as a cleanup, but we're going to join uh, all the groups into one because we're pretty sure everyone's bred. But just in case, we're going to leave one in. And tomorrow we're going to be bringing the Suffolk, two groups of Suffolk ewes over for um, Hilton and Quincy. But right now we got to separate rams. Poor Gimme, you're not going to like it. You're going to miss the girls. Yeah, you're going to miss the girls. So we've got Gimli out of his group. And then we're going to get Gaston. Hi, sweetheart. Sorry. But you've you, you're done your business. You can go out with the boys now. Yeah, those are nice boys there. So at our farm, whenever we're handling sheep, we check that they um, need or don't need other stuff doing while we have them. And Gimli, his... Uh, Hoofs had grown quite a bit, so it's uh, an opportunity while we have him in our hands to trim his hooves. He's uh, actually got really good hooves, but white hooves grow faster than black hooves. The good thing is that they're also a little bit softer, so easier to trim, but he's got nice feet, eh? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. But uh, Gimli here, he's uh, he's one of our own <sighs> breeding. He, watch yourself, baby. Yeah, gotta watch. He hey, 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 he's down, a down, very big down. ram. Sit down, sit down, sit down. See, he, he knows how to use his feet. <laughs> well, he's got, he his feet are on the thing. Well, but he's scared, poor little guy. But uh, Gimli is a three hundred pound ram, maybe <sighs> maybe even more. So he's a big boy. Unfortunately, the lighting's really bad in here. How's that? There, I'll go around this way, yeah. This will be much better. There, now we can see Gimme. Gimli is a really, really nice room. Hi, buddy. You see how much growth there? See that? Oh, yeah. See that? Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. A lot faster than a $10,000 shoot. And there he goes. Now he'll he'll walk a lot better, be a lot more comfortable. But he was trimmed uh, in the spring, and that's how much growth there was. Hi, Gimli. See, that got a good bite. Good testicles. That looks like a sixty-six hundred dollar ram. <laughs> he is. He's a nice boy. He's got, he's got a little thread in the front feet. So we uh, we showed Gimli when he was a lamb, and he did really well for it. Actually, he won all the shows, right? If we're talking about 
if we're, if we're talking about the width of the shoulder, so what happens if he's deeper in the rib? Mm -hmm. So if you, no, so if you're, hey Bob. So if you're talking about the width of the shoulder as, as a bad lammer, okay, and I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess he's, he's from 14 to, to 15, maybe 16 inches uh, thick on the shoulder. But I'm saying, if he's deeper here, you realize if this, if this is thick for bad lambing, then this deepness is going to cause just as much trouble, if that's the theory. Do you know what I mean? So, if, so where, where would you make the decision that this had to be narrower and this had to be more choked up? Because that's a big rip. Okay, what Arnie's talking about is uh, is some people are saying that uh, rams should be wedge-shaped. And some of the stuff you read about on confirmation said they should be wedge-shaped with their hips being broader than their chest because uh, then you'll have easier lambing. And that theory, of course, is true because if they're narrower, narrower, narrower at the front end, they are, are going to have easier... Um, the lambs will deliver easier because they'll be narrower at the front end. But um, the question arises, when you want a, a good high capacity sheep, that means you want them wide all over and you want them deep. So if you keep breeding for narrow front end, you're going to lose that capacity for the big lungs, big heart, uh, ability to eat and grow fast. And um, so we don't we don't select for that. We select for length, width, depth, um, all around. Um, and we have honestly, when is the last time we had a prolapse in our Suffolk? ten years ago? Since we had a, a prolapse, because we're selecting sheep with really wide hips that can deliver a wide lamb. So. Our theory has always been, um, for us especially, because we're doing breeding stock and we're doing um, meat breeds like terminal sheep, you want to have fast growing lambs and you don't get fast growing lambs from choky sheep. I want you to look at this. Come back here for a second. Look at this. Leave it on. Look, I look at this neck here. Look at the width of this neck here. So yeah. where, where are you going to say that that's a bad lammer, or or that or that how deep he is. Look at the look at the depth there. Like what is that? Twenty inches? Maybe twenty four inches? Like oh, that that's, that's probably twenty four inches for sure. That's easily two feet. Well, yeah, you'd have to get a tape measure, but, but he at, he's very deep. But look at the neck on him. How wide that neck is. Like, yeah. Well, some 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 people are saying uh, that you want to have a two B ram so that you have easy birthing. Our theory is that you want to improve your sheep and that 2B is going to, over time, just create a smaller, slower growing uh, sheep. And our whole aim is to have fast growing sheep so they're off to market at 100 days weighing 100 pounds, which uh, our sheep basically are. But look at that, that's a pretty good width in that front feet. Yep. And I and I'm sure I'm I'm sure I could sell this ram to anybody, but I but I will admit, on a first time view, this guy could be a little dangerous because yeah he's he, gonna throw you probably ram. Yes, yeah, so so yeah, we would definitely recommend on a first time lammer, to to use your smallest ram, not not a small choky ram. Still looking for you're still looking for those qualities that you're aiming to get in your meat lambs and your replacement ewes and your breeding stock but um like we we have all sizes here and gimli is the type that goes on uh experienced use she's lamb before stretched out um but um and our suffix are all uh high capacity suffix and we, I am not kidding, we never have prolapses, like knock on wood, <laughs> that we'd have none this year, but we don't. Um, we have had prolapses with the Dorsets, um, but we attribute it to um, overfeeding, uh, not, the, not the rams. 
And we have mentioned before that Dorsets you have to feed a little bit with a little bit more care. They can't handle the uh, amounts of food that a Suffolk can. So we have to just treat them a little differently. We want to advise people correctly and don't, don't want to come across as like we're giving you bad information. If you want easy birthers, go for a narrow chest. Absolutely. But if you're trying to create um, long lasting, high capacity animals that can grow fast and deliver anything, you gotta push the envelope a little bit by getting those uh, big grams in there and producing big ewes that can handle it. And here is uh, Gaston. He's got one girl in with him and we'll just get her out. And as you can see, she's already got a baby bump, I would say. I would say she's um, on her way. Okay, do you want me to climb in there with you? So now we got Gaston. Same thing, we're gonna trim his hooves. Sometimes you trim their dew claws. They have little claws at the side of their hooves. Gaston's a big gram too, but he is not as high capacity as Gimli is. But those people who came over and were criticizing our sheep the other day where we asked for them to criticize, uh, they preferred Gimli, right? But he's got a nice wide muzzle. You want that on a any in on any sheep. Wide muzzle usually means wide body, and it also means that they can eat better. And like we always say, the whole point of sheep growing is oh, eating. His girls are gonna miss some. It's okay. Yeah, that's your harem. Hi, Gimme. And now this is where the trouble arises. Now we were hoping, since it's a hotter day, that they would be okay. But I'm guessing this isn't going to be the greatest thing. These are big animals that can cause harm to each other. But what what we're okay, and and Gaston had to do a little side swipe there. What we were hoping to do is let them out and feed them all grain as a group, all the rams, and see if the grain distracts them enough that we can leave them. Otherwise, we're going to have to pin all the rams together in a pen until they get it out of their system. And we noticed that the Dorset rams are more likely to fight than the Suffolk's. Where's your husband going? I don't like him leaving. I think they're all bred. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Oh, see, see that? They do little swipes. And those little swipes aren't so bad, but uh, when they back up and run, it's really bad. But yeah, I'm guessing we're probably going to have to pin them up. The whole group. Well, we'll put them out in the grain first. Yeah, we'll try them with the grain. If that doesn't work, we're gonna have to lock them up till dinner time. Because we don't want anyone hurt. And you know, these guys have known each other for years. Doesn't matter. They've got you smell on them, and it's a competition, it's a pecking order. Stop you guys. We're going to head out to the ram pen and see what we do here. So no matter how long your rams have been buddies, anytime you move a ram from his buddy or the group of buddies, uh, you want to be careful reintroducing them. Grain is a good distractor. Gaston wants to go back with his girls. 
But when they're eating grain, they tend to be distracted. And sometimes that's all it takes. But if they keep at it, then you're gonna have to pin them up into a small crate so that they can't run and fight. And that in that when they're all together in a catch area, what's happening there is um, they're gonna get tired because they're doing that head swiping and they can't run around at all, so they can't do real damage. But also all their sweat and smells and stuff will be going on all over each other. So after a few hours, they're all gonna smell alike and it's harder for them to pick out one from another unless he's got a really bad attitude. So over there we have the guys that are still being uh, treated uh, with extra kindness because they had the worm overload, but you can see they're all pretty spunky in there. Still skinny, but uh, I think they're all going to be okay. So what we're doing now is we're bringing Gimli's group over and it's going to join all the other Dorsets here. And we're going to turn this into one big group and this is where they'll all be lambing. And like I said, we ha we're, we're leaving Fargo in here just in case there's anyone open still in all three groups. And I'll have the dates marked down so we know uh, who's doing it. So this has been their home for a while, so they're always reluctant to leave the place they're used to. But when one does it, they all do it. So they're all over there. So like I said, um, now there will only be one ram in here. We had a dividing wall at the back, so we're going to unhook that now so these guys can get more exercise because they'll be able to walk pretty well over the whole barn now. So you don't want rams going nose to nose. Some rams aren't so bad, but the majority of rams will fight. If they can see and sniff each other, they'll fight through the gates. We had one ram in here, Woody. Uh, we came in the barn and we didn't have the plywood up and, and his head print was right in the wire where he pulled it out and it matched totally his head. Yeah. So all our barns are designed so that uh, gates can be shifted so that your pens can easily be made bigger or smaller all the time because uh, things change all the time and you don't want to have to be starting from scratch. So um, we're because we've added another group, we're just going to give these girls a little bit extra space in here. So when you uh, put new U's in and uh, leave a ram behind, he will now go check all the new U's. And the excitement of being put in a new group, all these U's, and, and excitement for the ram seeing new U's, it will stimulate any that aren't already bred to start cycling again it's like introducing a new ram so if there are any open in here my guess is in the next 17 days which is a cycle he will have found them all and have bred them normally you wouldn't put one ram in with all this these ewes but we're we're um, counting on that Pretty well all of these will be bred if not all of them and he'll just catch any straggler and when it's Fargo we left in with them. As we were setting up the U pen here we discovered this U who has pink eye. So we just uh, gave her some antibiotics and we put some penicillin in her eye too. Arnie will show you what it looks like when he's done trimming, but again, we had her, her hoofs were long. Normally we wouldn't be catching a pregnant ewe and 
trimming her hooves, but we had her anyway. So now's the opportunity, and she really needed trimming too. Well, she's a lamb, so she was never trimmed. Well, my, it's my fault. I should so. do trimming. Her. But now she's gonna walk much better. Brand new feet, shoes. Yeah. Well fitting ones too. Orthopedic. Yeah. So you tri trim that pointy part off first and then you can slip the blades right down the center. Let's have a look so they can see what pink eye looks like. See how she's got her eye is red and it's got a haze over it. That's, That's a good eye there, I see. Normal eye should look like. You wouldn't now, have a marker, would you? Yep, hang so on. We put a dot on her so that we can keep an eye on her when she goes back with the group to make sure that that eye is clearing up. And um, when you get pink eye in the flock, it's something that spreads easily at this time of year because of flies. Flies will land on it and be the annoying creatures that they are. And they'll land on another sheep's eye and spread it. So she's marked, we'll keep an eye on her. We'll keep an eye on her eye. Um, and like I said, if, if you're ever in a situation where you have to do something with a, an animal, a ewe, a ram, uh, that's also a good opportunity to see if she needs anything else while you got her, like a, a hoof trimming or uh, anything like that. So I think she's the only one in there. She's the only one we found. Um, so again, I think we probably got it in the nick of time because that also will spread like wildfire through a barn at this time of year. Not so much in winter time when there's no bugs, but bugs uh, facilitate the spreading process. Hilton and Quincy are feeling pretty lonely now because they're back to being the only two in the pen. But tomorrow is gonna be a really exciting day for these two. Tomorrow is the day they get, each of them are, uh, we're gonna try get a group of 35 uh, really nice ewes for them each. And uh, at that point, of course, we will separate them. One will stay in this pen and one will go in the pen across and they'll soon forget about each other when they meet their uh, new girls. We're gonna keep an eye on them, but uh, the grain seem to have diffused the situation here with the rams. Plus it's very hot and humid. Um, sheep aren't too motivated in this kind of temperature, so um, they don't really feel too much like fighting either. Um, more in cooler temperatures, but we are going to keep an eye. We're going to leave them now though because We got Gaston over here who's being surrounded by all the little ram lambs, but he's not fighting back with them <coughs> The ram lambs just they're trying to act tough <coughs> And Gaston's really Like he's above that so he's not doing anything and uh, Gimli's here They'll be trying to take him on too because he's the big guy in the group. We're just going to watch if right now everybody is behaving pretty good. So <coughs> we're not going to lock him up. But if they start acting silly, we will. We're going to call this a day. We're just uh, coming in from the ram pen. Just going to, Gimli's got his mouth full. So he's okay. He's settled back in. Gimli is... Uh, Right at home. He's uh, got his mouth full, looking yeah, yeah. quite content. Ah, oh, Gimli, you're such a beautiful ram. Everybody, everybody looks like they settled back in. It is one of the good things about the heat. So, everybody looks to be doing good. Um, we're going to call this a day. And hope you'll join us tomorrow when we sort out a breeding group for Hilton and Quincy and get them all set up. Anyway, until then, bye for now.